When I was young, I saw a TV program in which a guy showed that when you change the music on a clip from a film, you change its mood. He made about seven or eight versions with different soundtracks all over the very same images, and the mood of the clip was completely transformed each time thanks to the changes in the musical universe and in the soundtrack. It fascinated me to see you could do this. Right then, I thought, that's what I want to do. Writing the soundtrack for a film featuring, among other things, computer-generated images is a very specific type of task, since the music in some ways also plays a role in the script-writing process. Whereas in a traditional film, the music is produced once all the images have already been shot, the particularity in a film like this is that the images take a long time to produce, so the composer needs to start working very early on, since the music will have a certain impact on the creation of the images. It's fascinating to see that this back-and-forth exchange exists between composer and director. I've been collaborating with Pascal Viong for several years now, and a few months ago when he approached me about D-Day Normandy 1944, I was immediately thrilled by the idea of writing the music for this film. First of all, because it's a film about a historical event, and there was a specific style of composition that I wanted to try out. Then, there was the subject itself, D-Day, which is not one that's often explored, let alone on giant IMAX screens, with all the effects and emotion. Especially for this film, we recorded in London, with the London Symphony Orchestra, which is certainly one of the top orchestras in the world for this type of music. When it came to finding my partner to conduct the orchestra, naturally, I needed someone who had already worked with the London Symphony Orchestra. Very quickly, his name came up, and I called him. He was extremely receptive, and enthusiastic about collaborating on this project. And very importantly, right away, he asked to hear the music. I have a pretty specific process when composing. I usually start writing here, at the piano, where it's calm, and I work on the theme. This is where I find my inspiration for the melody and harmonies. Then, once I have the theme, I quickly go downstairs to my studio, and I start orchestrating. I work with a variety of tools, sample libraries and hardware. This allows the director to hear a practically final orchestration before recording. Once that's done, I have everything transcribed onto sheet music. And then, I'm off to record the final score with the symphony orchestra in a big studio. Air Studios, where we recorded in London, was formerly a church. So, it has two important qualities. Its acoustics are amazing, and it's immense which is very practical when recording an orchestra with upwards of 70 members. Since I was little, my musical influences have come from the great composers of American cinema, who, in my opinion, in the future will remain as esteemed as the great classical composers. For me, there are really three that I have consistently listened to and enjoyed. The first, and for me the greatest, is obviously John Williams. I know everyone says the same thing, but he's had a tremendous influence on me. Then, there's Alan Silvestri. And, of course, with his truly unique and slightly darker tone, Danny Elfman. Those are the three greats who have influenced my work for film. Thank you. 